Welcome to the Fox Learn. Mistakes happen. It's a simple fact of life, and it's true in programming, too. Even the most experienced programmers make mistakes, sometimes the same mistakes over and over. Mistakes are normal, and they are easy to make, especially in a programming language such as C Sharp, we even have a special word for programming mistakes, bugs. The debugger is your friend. There is simply no tool more powerful than a debugger for learning C Sharp and for writing quality C Sharp programs. Put simply, the debugger is a tool that helps you understand what is really going on when your program is running. You'll be putting a breakpoint on the first line of main, to see how this code actually works. A breakpoint is an instruction to the debugger to stop running. You set a breakpoint, run the program, and the debugger runs the program up until the breakpoint. Examining your program as it runs can help you untangle otherwise impenetrable problems. You'll often set multiple breakpoints, which allows you to skip through your program, examining the state of your object at selected locations. You can set a breakpoint in many different ways. The easiest is to click in the left margin of the code window. This causes a red dot to appear in the margin next to the relevant line of code, which is also highlighted in red. The most useful feature of the debugger is the ability to step into the code, or execute the program one line at a time, watching the changes that happen with each line. To step into the code, press the F11 function key twice. F11 and F10 are the step command keys. The difference is that F10 steps over method calls, whereas F11 steps into them. With F10, the methods are executed, but you don't see each step within the method in the debugger, the highlighting jumps to the next statement after the method call. When you step into the method call with F11, on the other hand, the highlighting will move to the first line of the called method. If you use F11 to step into a method you actually meant to step over, Shift F11 will step you out. The method you stepped into will run to completion, and you'll break on the first line back in the calling method.
Look at the tabs below the code window if you're using Visual Studio, you'll find a Locals window and an Autos window, possibly as tabs in a single window along with some others. The difference is that the Autos window shows variables used in the current statement and the previous statement. To see how this works, put a breakpoint on the first line of the run, method and run the program. When the program stops, press F10 to step over the creation of the new box object. Press F11 to progress through the assignment of values to the member variables of the box class. When you're debugging a program with many local variables, you usually don't want to watch all of them, you need to keep track of only a few. You can track specific variables and objects in the watch window. The watch windows are usually tabbed with the locals window. You can add a watch by right clicking on a variable and choosing add watch or you can just drag the variable to the watch window. The variable will be added to your watch window. To remove a variable that you've added to your watch window, you can right click on it in the watch list and select delete watch. In Visual Studio only, if you just need to peek at a variable, and perhaps to experiment with manipulating its value, you can right click on it and choose quick watch, which opens a dialog box with watch information about a single object. You can see that the box constructor was called by the run, method, while the run, method was in turn called by main. Notice that the debugger puts a green curved arrow on the line in the call stack you've double clicked on, and a matching arrow in the editor to the line that corresponds to that call. This way, if you're debugging a method and you think the data causing the problem came from outside the method, you can quickly find where the method call came from and check the values at that point.
Sometimes, as you're debugging, you'll realize that something has gone wrong enough that there's no point in running the program to its end, or maybe you just want to fix the problem right now, before running any further. When that happens, you want to just end the program where it is, stop the debugging, and go back to your editing window. Fortunately, that's pretty easy. To stop debugging and end the program, just click debug stop debugging, or click the stop button on the debugging toolbar. Visual Studio includes a powerful debugger that lets you step through your program and examine the value of variables and objects as methods execute. You can set breakpoints in your code, which causes execution to stop when it reaches that point. Breakpoints can be set to stop every time, every end time, or when a particular condition is true. Press F11 to step into called methods, and F10 to skip over method calls. The Autos window displays the values of the variables used in the current statement and the previous statement. The Locals window shows the values of all the variables in the current method. The Watch window allows you to keep an eye on variables or objects as your method executes, not only revealing their value, but in the case of complex objects, allowing you to drill down into their internal state. The quick watch window displays information about a single object, and allows you to manipulate that object without changing the value of the object in the running program. The call stack window shows you the method that called your currently executing method, and the method that invoked that method, and so forth, so that you can see how you arrived at the currently executing method. Thank you for watching this video.